Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Pray First. It's our conversation we have Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. I'm so glad you all are here. Guys, we are closely approaching 2,000 followers. Um, that's not viewers. That's people who actually follow our page. Uh, so I want to say a shout out to you 2,000 people who follow the Pastor Doug page and just let you know I appreciate it so much. We also have a uh, Pray First official page. Uh, if you join that, you can see more content. It's a place where all of you guys can share, talk, pray for one another, and just be there, ask questions, make comments, whatever. I also want to say a shout out to all of you in Pray First fellowships. Uh, Pray First Fellowship is an opportunity for you to get together with people in your community, in your town, uh, maybe your neighborhood or your church, and, you know, discuss Pray First topics, take it further. Um, you know, you're going to learn more when you start talking about these things and hearing what other people heard. One person can hear one verse, and or, or ten people can hear one verse and get ten revelatory truths out of it. So I want to encourage you to do that. So shout out to the Olive Branch crew. I heard that Pray First Fellowship was on fire. So if you were at the Pray First Fellowship, I want you to hashtag I was there. If you were there at Olive Branch this past Sunday. Uh, we're talking about the book of Philippians, so I'm going to jump right in. Uh, but before I jump right in, I want all of you to welcome our first time guest. Hit the hearts, hit the likes. Guys, if you are first time joining us, maybe you saw us on someone's page, maybe someone tagged you, shared this with you, or you were scrolling through your news feed and there it was and you just showed up, we want to welcome you. So our folks are hitting the hearts, they're hitting the thumbs, they're going to go super duper crazy on that. That's super duper crazy. So good job guys, welcome to Pray First. Obviously when we're talking about the book of Philippians, we want to go straight to Corinthians. So let's read 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 16 through 18. Paul says, Therefore, we do not lose heart. That's something I want to invest in you today, to not lose heart. Because when you're trying to do something, when you're trying to make a difference, when you want you know, to follow the plan of God for your life, there's going to be resistance. Now, I need you to listen to me clearly. All resistance is not of the devil. All resistance is not from Satan. The devil's not making you do it, and there's oftentimes the devil's not holding you down. God uses tension and resistance to strengthen your spiritual muscle, to strengthen your soul, to strengthen your mind, your will, your emotions. God uses tribulation, tension, stresses to strengthen you and to produce patience in you. Come here, you may not want to hear this, but there is no other way to develop character in your life than patience. Zero. Scripture is crystal clear that it is patience that leads to character. And if you don't develop patience, you will never be able to support your destiny. Because most people live with a dream, they live with a hope, they live with a motivation. They live with a I want to. And the reason most people live with a dream is because their character won't support their destiny. Guys, while you're dreaming, understand this. Don't lose heart. Don't give up. Don't quit. And don't run. Don't look for a way out from under every tension. Don't look for a way to get away from every person who questions you or causes you stress, or is someone who, you know, we just, we just, oil and water, oil and water. Therefore, do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, Paul says, inwardly we are being renewed day by day for our light and momentary troubles. How can Paul talk about imprisonment, shipwrecked, how can Paul talk about snake bitten? How can Paul, who has been stoned, talk about his circumstances and his situations as being light and momentary? They were heavy and they were constant. How could Paul make a decision to say the words that our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us 
They're, God is using them. God is working our muscles with tension. God is working our muscles with tribulation. He's working our muscles. He says, this is, he's achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we, Paul says, those of us who follow Christ, we fix our eyes not on what is seen, because what is seen is outside of our control. Not on things that are outwardly, you know, applied to our lives. We don't fix our eyes on things that are external. We do not fix our eyes on what is seen. We fix our eyes on what is unseen. We fix our eyes on joy that is inside of us, that God is doing something inside of us since what is seen is temporary. Come here, come here, come here. What is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Hashtag happy external. Hashtag joy internal. Happy from the root word hap, the Latin word luck or chance. Don't leave God's plan for your life up to luck or chance. Okay? And stop running from tension. Stop running every time your plan falls through. Stop running every time someone doesn't listen to you. Stop running every time someone questions you. Stop running when the people in the play box don't play nice. God is developing something inside of you. Patience that will develop character that will support destiny. Come here, guys. God gave Joseph a dream, and that dream motivated him. But God also gave Joseph a destiny. Joseph's dream, come here, was selfish. And it came from God, but it was selfish. Joseph wanted to be important. He wanted his family, he wanted people to listen to him. He wanted to have influence. But God's destiny was better than Joseph's dream. You see, God was not interested in Joseph's parents bowing down to him. God was interested in Joseph feeding millions of people, saving the lives of men, women, and children throughout Egypt and throughout the known world. God had a destiny for Joseph that wasn't about Joseph. He had to be thrown into pits. He had to be sold into slavery. He had to be falsely accused. He had to be imprisoned. He had to go through many tests, 10 as a matter of fact, before his character was available to support his destiny. And Paul is telling us that two things are going to happen in your life as you follow Jesus in this journey. Come here, come here, come here. Paul says two things are going to happen to you as you follow Jesus in this destiny journey that you're on. And that's this. There's going to be supernatural and there's going to be natural things that happen to you. Okay, supernatural things happen in an instant. Amen? Salvation. Supernatural. Supernaturally, you're changed from the person you used to be, from the, you know, the existence in eternity that you used to have. You are a different person. But there are some things that happen to you that are natural and God uses both. God instantly changes us supernaturally, but God teaches us so that we can learn through the natural. Don't discredit the natural test that you're going through right now. It's not supernatural. It's not the devil. It's not Satan. It is a test you're going through, and it's from God. Woo! <laughs> Mercy. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19 I just want to read you some stuff. Let me read Philippians 4.11 first. I'm not saying this because I am in need. I have learned, Paul says. So there you go. There's supernatural and there's learned. Paul says, I have learned to be content. It wasn't supernatural. I didn't get saved, get baptized, and oh, I'm content. <laughs> I'm just so happy to be in chains. <laughs> I'm thrilled with a snake bite. <laughs> Another shipwreck. Praise the Lord. Paul said, I learned to be content. I discovered that 
discontentment, discontentment killed my joy. And happiness wasn't an option. Happiness for me, Paul would have said, is to go to Rome and preach to thousands, change the lives of millions, be influential, and be the first century Billy Graham. But it's not what God had for me. God rescued me and supernaturally changed me and he sent me on a journey of test after test after test and the prison wasn't from Satan, the snake bite wasn't from Satan, the stoning wasn't from Satan. Come on. The five times I took 39 lashes wasn't from Satan. God used the tension to support the gospel message. And my plans fell through. And I landed in my destiny. Woohoo! Merciful heavens. Come here, come here, come here. Happiness comes by chance. Joy comes by choice. Hashtag happiness comes by chance. Joy comes by choice. I'm going to say it again. Happiness comes by chance. Joy comes by choice. Happiness comes when everything around me is okay. Joy dances when it ain't. <laughs> Mercy! Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19. This day I call the heavens and the earth as a witness against you that I have set before you life and death. You have a choice. This day you have a choice. I set before you a choice between life and death. Blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. If you're going to make a difference in this world, come here, all of you listening to me, you have a destiny. God has a dream for you. It motivates you. God gave you the dream you have. But you also have a destiny. It's from God. Your dream and your destiny is different. Your dream is to do something for yourself or to be recognized or to do something significant. All that's okay. Nothing's wrong with that. But your destiny is to change the lives of the world around you. Your destiny is to make a difference and to feed the hungry and to protect the, 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 the weak and to support the poor and the widows and the orphans. Our calling, that religion, which is a sweet-smelling aroma to God, is to help someone else. It is to love someone else. It is to love our enemy. It is to love our neighbor. It is to love our Lord. And it it's to love ourselves. If you're going to make a difference in this world, it won't always be in your actions. If you're going to make a difference in this world, it will be in your reactions. It will be how you respond to the tension. It will be how you respond to the character development of patience. It will be how you respond to your authorities in your life. It will be how you respond to things and how you identify things. And, and you may pray against them and it's the devil and it is Satan. Maybe, just maybe, you're being tested because you have a destiny that's going to require strength that moves mountains. You have a destiny that is going to require you to take steps of faith that no one else has seen, no one else has heard. It has neither entered the eyes or the ears or the heart of man, but comes through the Holy Spirit. And you're going to be tested in the pit. You're going to be tested in the palace. You're going to be tested in the prison. You're going to be tested in the jail. You're going to be tested with other people's possessions. You're going to be tested to see not what you'll do, but how you'll respond Sometimes, as you get ready to be developed into what God's called you to do and make a difference in the world, it won't be your actions. It will be your reactions that develop character. And as long as you run from the tension, your spiritual muscles will never, ever, ever grow. Mercy. So number one, stop asking why. Number two, start asking what. Remember, I told you the other day, stop asking why. Number one, stop asking why. Number two, start asking what. Hashtag what. Here, when you start asking what, is where you'll discover your great God. When you start asking what, is where you'll discover God, 
what are you up to now? God, what are you up to next? God, you just keep changing the rule. You keep changing the plan. You keep changing the circle. You keep changing the... Whoa! God, what are you up to next? I know I'm doing this, but God, you got that. What, God, what are you up to now? Come here, I need you to hear me crystal clearly. You can sit in the pout. You can sit in the pit and pout. Or you can sit in your cell and shout. Come on. You can sit in the pit where people and circumstances threw you in. And you can pout. You can sit in the pit and pout. Or you can sit in your cell and shout. Ask Paul. Ask Joseph. You can sit in the pit and whine. Oh, they won't let me. They told me no. They threw me in the pit. It's their fault. It's the devil. It's the devil. Listen. People and circumstances might throw you in a pit. But if you stay in a pit, I saw you, chicken. I saw you. I saw you, baby. You need to get up out the pit. You need to wipe the snot off your face. You need to quit blaming everybody around you because you can't fulfill God's plan for your life. No one can stop you from fulfilling, fulfilling God's plan for your life but you. And sometimes it won't be because you missed an action, but because you failed at a reaction. You ran. You identified God's test as from the enemy. You identified your friends as your enemy. You identified the circumstance as being too difficult and too hard. <gasps> you can sit in the pit and pout. Or you can sit in a cell and shout. But what God was up to with Paul, what was God up to? Not, why am I here? Why, why am I here? Paul, why am I here? Not, why, Paul, why are you in jail? Why, why are you in jail? No, 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 no. What was God doing? Paul was like, God, what you doing while I'm in jail? You see, Paul wanted to preach. Paul wanted to teach. Paul wanted to go to Rome. And here he is sitting in jail. What was God up to? Well, let me tell you what God was up to. Paul, God was having Paul write most of our New Testament that he would not have had time to write had he been preaching in Rome. He was writing the book of Philippians. That's what God was up to while Paul was in jail. While Paul was chained and bleeding and afraid and sitting in the dark dungeons of his life, Paul was writing the book so you and I could have pray first this morning. You see, Paul would not have had time to do the plan of God. Paul would have been standing on a stage in Rome and everybody in the first century would have known him. But you and I may have never heard of him, but God had a different plan for his life. Paul had a dream. God had a destiny. God had a destiny for Paul that he would sit in a prison and write Ephesians, Philippians. Come on. Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. You wouldn't have those books if Paul had his way. You wouldn't have those books had Paul not experienced the tension and the adversity and the tribulation of the shipwrecks and the snakes and the beatings and the injustice, the things that we claim the devil's trying to hold us back with is what God is using to provide tension for a catapult to throw his word, to throw his gospel, to throw his plan past our tombstone. God has a plan for you. God has a dream for you. Go chase it. Go get your dream. But God is going to use followers of Christ in a destiny that eyes have not seen and ears have not heard and neither has entered the heart of man. You can't even think up what God has for you. And you don't have to be on a stage and you don't have to be in front of a camera. You can do it today where you are in the midst of your circumstances. Happiness is external. But choose joy because greater is He is in you than he that is in the world. I got one more verse and then I got to go. Philippians chapter 1, 13 and 14. This is what Paul says. As a result... You want results? Here's your results. As a result, it has become clear throughout the whole palace guard, Paul says, and to everyone else that I'm in chains for Christ. The devil didn't do this. 
It has become clear to the whole palace guard and to everyone else that I am in chains for Christ. Hashtag for Christ. And because of my chains, he says, I mean, it's like he's losing his mind. And because of my chains, most of the brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord. My chains has brought confidence to the brothers and sisters, the palace guard, and everyone else who's heard that I'm in chains for Jesus Christ. Most of those brothers and sisters have become confident in the Lord and dare all the more to proclaim the gospel without fear. Let me pray for you. Father, right now in Jesus' name, no fear. No fear. No one can stop what you're doing anyway. I give myself to the role you asked me to play. You can't stop joy. Lord, I pray that today for the people watching and listening in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Hashtag live, hashtag recorded, hashtag shared. Get this stuff out on your page. Hashtag no fear. Please share this. Do you know how many people need to hear this? That's right, you. I love y'all. Bye, guys. See you later. Have a good day.